Cheers guys, I'm the Tech Prepper. Hope you're all doing well. So today I wanna to cover two things. Number one, there's gonna be a small change in the direction of the channel. And number two, I wanna inspire a whole new generation of amateur radio operators to embrace 1980s packet radio. Stick around. So as for the direction of this channel, I need to change it just a little bit. I recently took seven weeks off of work unpaid to work on my communications platform, and I finally have that to a nice spot. And I realized how valuable my time is, especially since I still have my day job, and going out into the field and running around for six, seven, eight hours, coming home, dumping video editing, even my core production quality field videos take about 18 to 20 hours plus all of the engagement and I just don't have time. Personally, I think I can provide more value to the radio community, the preparedness community by focusing on software and dropping a video probably every two to three weeks and not spending so much time on production. Again, not great quality, but I don't have the time for it. So this is about as polished as you're gonna get. If you guys can't deal with that, see you later. So instead, I just want to share good information that is practical to you. I've kind of done this all along, and I've been working on uh, some modes of operation that involve packet radio. I know that mostly died off in the 90s, but I'm finding value. Meshtastic does not work for me out here just because of the remote nature, and there aren't enough nodes. But packet, I can light up and talk to uh, all of my guys in the group going up to about 100 miles, so that's what I'm going to personally work on. If you guys are looking for Meshtastic, probably right now or this year is not the time to do it or expect it from this channel. It's gonna be packet. Now, I did find something really interesting. About five or six years ago, there was a protocol built on top of AX25, that's basically packet radio, and it's a protocol called Chatterbox. And what I liked about it was the simplicity, and I'm a big fan of the keep it simple, stupid philosophy and having tools that just works. So I installed this on a couple of machines here. In fact, it's gonna be part of uh, the next major release of the MCOM Tools Community uh, R4 release. And I wanna show you why it's so valuable in my opinion. So number one, it kind of, uh, it's in a gray area in terms of the FCC, but my understanding is it actually works within the letter of the regulations. It uses digital signatures to verify the sender and receiver on both ends of the communication so that you don't have a scenario where someone puts in your call sign and spoofs you. So completely uh, legal as far as uh, my understanding is looking at it. it, uses elliptic curve cryptography. I'll put the link down below so you can read more about it. But man, this gentleman did a fantastic job developing Chatterbox and I just wanna show you a quick demo. We're gonna be using the Dell 7220 with my FT60 dual, uh, dual band uh, rig with the DigiRig light. And then we're gonna be using my field computer here, the Panasonic FZM1 Mark II with a Balfang radio also connected to a DigiRig light. And we're gonna have a bi-directional conversation. Also, keep in mind I'm using my uh, commercial radio frequency because I'm using my old, old call sign on this guy and my current call sign and I'm not sure what the legal ease are around using your old amateur radio call sign. Let me know down below. Either way, it's on my commercial frequency, but if we had two licensed amateur radio operators, this should all be legit. So my intention here is just to show you what's possible. I'm not gonna show you everything there is to know about Chatterbox. I just want to demonstrate more than anything the way that we can verify the other person. So on this machine, the Dell 7220, I'm going to run ET mode, and this is part of my MCOM tools package, and I've made it convenient to have zero configuration to launch Chatterbox. It's actually pretty simple without even my software on top. And if that works correctly, we should see a prompt with my call sign KT7RUN on the system. We're gonna run the exact same uh, ET uh, mode and select Chatterbox, and then we'll have my old call sign KT1RUN. Again, I'm using my business frequency just so that I'm compliant. So I'm gonna put, uh, hey, I am the old guy, or new guy actually, new call sign. And if it works, we should see it pop up over here, and you'll notice right away on this receive station it says key not found, and it's because I do not have the public key for this guy here. And it's not doing encryption, what it's doing is signing and verifying the message sender on both sides. Now if I respond uh, with this system, the uh, FZM1 say, hey, I am the old guy. 
I did already install this system's public key over here. And we'll send that across with the Boofwang and hopefully we'll get it. And you'll notice that there's no message. It came in yellow saying, hey, I am the old guy. Now, if I want to ensure that the key is, uh, that I can verify the user, what you can do is send the public key from this system to this system. And I already have that ready to go here. So I'm just gonna use chatterbox, add key, the call sign of this station and their public key. And now in terms of my key store, I can verify any messages that someone claims to be KT7RUN. So now uh, I did notice though that I do have to close Chatterbox after I update the key. So I'm just gonna rerun my ET mode, select Chatterbox, and then uh, I'll put, did you install my public key? And now if it all works properly, you'll notice it showed up in blue. And now I can absolutely confirm that the two stations that are talking to each other are absolutely who they say they are. The only thing you don't want to leak is your private signing key. And uh, other than that, guys, really simple. So let me tell you where the future is going to go with this. I have been looking for a modem, or in this case, yeah, I guess a modem, even though this is a protocol on top of AX25 to provide basic messaging, but build a graphical application that is more high speed and nerd free. So that's what I'm gonna be working on in Q1. It's gonna be called MCOM Tools Messenger. Unfortunately, that piece of it, I'm going to release uh, to the members. Uh, the community version will have this low level chatterbox, so you could still use this as is, but I'm gonna build a, a set of tools on top of the community edition that are uh, more modern in how they work, and this is all based on my time is valuable. Uh, I have spent 20 plus years perfecting my trade, and unfortunately, I'm trying to find every way to monetize it, and YouTube ain't cutting it. Anyways, guys, I hope you found this inspirational. Let's bring back Packet, let's use some modern techniques, and let's rethink the future of off grid comms. I'm the tech prepper. Be strong, be safe, and be prepared.